Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages Florida podcast. In this show we talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs and interesting folks who live here in the villages, to give perspectives of what is happening here in the Villages Florida. We are a listener-supported podcast. How can you support our podcast? This is Mike Roth, and listeners, I'm thrilled to share with you this podcast, which is my passion project for you. This podcast brings me joy, brings you knowledge, inspiration, and a lot of things that people need to know about the villages and the people that are living here and what's actually going on. Creating this podcast is a labor of love, even though it demands more time than I can easily spare. But hey, Time isn't something we can buy back, right? Now, here's where you come in, the unsung heroes and heroines. You can help us keep the podcast alive and thriving. How? By becoming a supporter. There are two simple ways that you can support us. The first is a small monthly donation. Visit our podcast website, openforuminthevillagesflorida.com, and click on the black supporter box. Even a small $3 to $10 a month donation makes a difference. And guess what? You can cancel any time, no strings attached. The second way that you can contribute to the podcast is by making a purchase of an Amazon product at Amazon standard prices, and we are paid a small commission on each purchase as an Amazon affiliate. That way there's no extra money out of your pocket, but you are supporting the podcast. Check every week because we're going to be adding new Amazon products that you can buy and support the podcast with. Thank you. And your support means the world to us. Stay curious, stay inspired, and keep those headphones on. This is Mike Roth on Open Forum in the Villages. Today I'm here with Chad Richardson. Say hi, Chad. Hi, Mike. And today we're going to be talking about Chad's new movie, Bad Senator. Chad, that's an interesting title for a movie in an election season. How did you come up with the title? Yeah, it is an interesting title. And what's more interesting is it has nothing to do with politics, is (laughs) what's ironic about the movie. But it is a a story about a a retired narcissist senator who is trying to, he realizes that for all his awards and popularity and and meeting the president and everything else that he's nearing the end of his life. And he realized he has nothing. He's lost the love of his life. He's lost respect of his only child. And he has one friend by default, a disgruntled Marine neighbor that he hangs out with because nobody will be around him. We came up with Bad Center just because you say it and people don't forget it. It just sticks. Got a high stickiness. You know, I, re- is- I really love that Marine character. He has a yeah. broad face, a great actor. He's an amazing individual, and I'll tell more about Rob Moore but as we tell the story. But the, the amount of commitment that these actors, it was just incredible how much they got into the roles. So it was heartwarming. Did they both do their own stunts? There is a stunt in the movie, and what's interesting is Vanessa Neff, who played Iris, we had a stunt in the movie, and she was all in. She's, I'll do it, I'm in. And we're like, can't do that stunt, unfortunately. We can't lose you during our filming, but... Uh, I mean, they were game for anything, so it was, yeah. it was wonderful. I thought the some of the stunts in the golf cart. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Right. I don't want to spoil up for any people who haven't seen it yet, but yeah, she wanted to do that stunt. She was all in, and uh, she's just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. He had a cast of very interesting characters, and it was very believable. I'll say this about Rob, since we're talking about it. The original script had the character of Jocko Stone as a disgruntled Marine who lost his leg in combat, which we've seen over and over again with our young soldiers and terrible things that have happened to them. And he was very disgruntled with how he was treated after post being in service. And when we picked Rob for the role, it turns out that Rob had a, has a very serious injury. And in the spirit of committing to this movie, he said, I'm open to revealing my wound and part of my personal story is part of this journey. And it meant the world to us. It was unbelievable that he was allowed us to do this. And it was a very tough thing to film. When we film that, when you see those emotions, when we do the reveal in the movie, those aren't fake. We are we had a skeleton crew that were getting emotional in the other room watching it. It was a tough scene for Rob to do. But that's a level of commitment that, that these actors brought to the table. And it was just it was incredible. You had a good cast of actors, and the surroundings were really good. 
why don't you tell our listeners why you decided to shoot the film where you did? Yeah, that's a good question. My parents, my dad has passed away, but my parents have lived near the villages at the Del Webb retirement community for over 20 years. And we've been going to the villages for 25 years. And our personal experiences, we absolutely love it. We love everything about the villages. We love what it represents. And over the years, I've watched these amazing moments with senior citizens, these moments of tenderness, these moments of togetherness. Like in one of the groups in our movie is called the Widow Group. And the Widow Group gets together, has a few beers, maybe a few too many, and, and they console each other and they, they welcome new members on a regular basis. That's a real group. That's not you. What you saw in the movie was the actual widow group that does that. And you want to see beautiful tech moments, then join that group and see it's a, we address this in the movie and it, we're all going to see the end of our life one day and see the end of our loved ones if we're alive. And there's no win. There's no win in this because if you're with a loved one and you lose them, it's horrible. It's very tragic. And you know, you're talking about a lifetime with somebody. And then the other flip of the coin, if you're alone. How horrible is that to live and die alone? So there's no easy answer. And what we try to address is death with grace, with beauty, with celebrating a life well lived. And that's what we tried to focus on. And we tried to express that in the movie. I was surprised when one of your key characters died in the movie. Yeah. And, and what I wanted that character to live. The first three years of the screenplay, that character lived. But one of the magical things that happens to a writer is when you get in the zone, when you get in the moment, the characters start writing their own story. And then you're just writing as fast as you can to keep up with what the characters are telling you. So that character just kept pushing towards that end. And I hope we did a good job with it. I know the actors gave it their all. Obviously, you saw it. It, it was interesting the way you brought that character into the movie. Uh, yeah. It reminded me of another movie, Grumpy Old Man. That's a great movie. Yeah. yeah, a good comp. I, I, I enjoyed that movie. Yeah, there was yeah. just a, a stage play of, of the Grumpy Old Man musical. Right, yeah. And it, yeah. It, it was quite good. I always go back to Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon were one of my favorites growing up. And that's, I'm 58, and they're a little older than I am. Mm-hmm. But that's the classics that we tried to, that energy, that spirit, that, that camaraderie. We really, I really enjoyed that, so. You wrote the whole movie yourself? Yes. How, it took you three years to write the movie? What happened, and I didn't even realize this until I, I had a, a, one of the screenings, we had a Q&A after one of the screenings at the Orange Blossom Opry, was I actually started writing it when my father died. And I didn't even know he passed away six years ago, and I didn't even realize it. I guess I buried it and didn't want to face it. And But yeah, it was six years in the making, it turns out. Why don't you share with our audience a little bit of your background? in filmmaking? I grew up loving writing. I absolutely loved it. I wrote in high school. I wrote in college. However, I grew up in a public service generational family. My father was a police officer. We're all police, fire, military. My brother snatched up firefighter before I could. So he never worked for a living, to be honest with you. So he did 25 years of nothing. But that left me to be the police officer, follow the line. So I was, did 25 years as a Metro Detroit police officer. And in all the main, the, all the, we have six kids. So writing during my career and raising six children, I don't have that right. I really don't. We're too busy with doing what we're supposed to do as parents. Mm-hmm. And when I retired in 2013, the, the moment I retired, I started writing. And, and I wrote three novels. I started off with three novels. I wrote four, but I'm not going to share the first one because it's so bad. But... <laughs> I worked hard and I wrote, it's called Jolly Jane. She's a, it's a police thriller. And that was followed with the Greeley Chronicles, which is the second in the police thriller, which I got great reviews. And then I wrote a family drama called Iris Valley. And that got great reviews. The problem with being a novelist is Amazon has about 15 million books and they're stable at any given moment. And you have to market yourself. You have to market your name Not the books, you have to market your name, your personality, who you are. And I'm really a behind the scenes guy. I don't want to be in front unless I have to. I I want to be behind the camera. So I moved away from that and I I quickly fell in love with screenwriting 
and I've been screenwriting for about nine years now. Have any of your other writing efforts resulted in screen time? Yeah, that's a great question. What you find out in Hollywood is it's one in a million. And so I've been to Hollywood. I pitch in Hollywood. I had a Hollywood agent. I've almost closed on several deals. And then something always stops it. It's any number of things, but it, it, at the end of the day, you just get no after no. And, and I hate to say this, but I think it, it came to a halting crash for me. And I think you have to understand where I come from. I came from a long line of proud police officers. We took great pride in serving the public. We weren't abusive. We were the officers that you want to come to your house right. because we saw problems. We helped people. We took pride in that. And that's what we do. And I had a, a really great script that was in the final stages of sale. And my agent at the time asked me to take my name off the script. And I said, yeah, I can't do that because that's my parents' name. That's my grandfather's name. And her quote was that, that unfortunately, nobody in Hollywood is going to buy a script from a white cop from Detroit. And she said, I'm sorry, but everybody hates the police. Uh, I'm laughing so hard because I had a business in uh, Los Angeles for 15 years. And yeah. uh, while I was there, I had such trouble with the few clients that we had in the Hollywood area and community that I totally redlined them. And I said to my staff, we're no longer going to service Hollywood. There was too much craziness. I think the blatant statements like that, there's the reverse discrimination. It's unfortunate. But on a positive note, that's when I, I sat down with my wife and I said, why don't we I'm ready. I have scripts that are, can be produced. I believe in them. And my favorite script is Bad Senator. And why don't we look for investors on our own and let's just make this. And during the last 10 years, not only did I write, but, and I failed to mention this, is that I've been working in the movie industry in any capacity, whether it's a background actor, a grip, an intern, anything I can get a job in the industry. And so I've been on many multiple television and movie sets and just learning the craft. And I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. I'll be sitting with Kiefer Sutherland mm -hmm. doing a, a scene and during in between takes, I'll start picking his brain because I want to know. And after 10 years of doing that, and I'm a researcher by nature, we we felt we were ready and we built a beautiful, competent production team. We, we were able to secure funding for the movie. And, and one of the caveats that I had which did cost us quite a bit of money, was I wanted to film down at the Villages. It's a lot cheaper. I'm in Atlanta. It's a lot cheaper to, to film here. We wanted to film there. So that's where the story originated. Just love the area. And we didn't get to film inside the Villages. And our understanding from the Villages staff was they had a, a filmmaker come in that really did a poor job of representing their community. And we tried to explain that we're not those people. We will never be those people. We're completely transparent. We offered to, to have them okay our script, and we just couldn't get in the front door. So yeah. we filmed around the villages. We had, what was amazing thing is word spread about our story. I actually posted the screenplay in social circles down there, and we ended up having over 200 senior citizens contact us, said, we love the story. We want to be a part of this any way we can. So we had some great people from the villages that stepped up and offered their homes, food. We were fed amazing. We had uh, just some amazing meals. We had Karen was one of our retiree chefs that, oh my gosh, she was incredible. But so we had this amazing support. People were out in droves every single day and it makes the movie look much bigger. It makes our movie look like a, a multi-million dollar movie instead of the budget we had. So we can't, we can never thank the people down there enough for us gambling and coming down there and them saying, okay, we're going to help you out. We're going to help you make this movie that, that tells such a, a beautiful story about this troubled family. So in round numbers, what did, what did, was the production cost to get the, the, the movie from script? Yeah, it was around $200,000. I, I don't and, really want to add up the total yet. Okay. The, you know, dealing with the that. Hollywood level movie. Okay, yeah. two hours and 16 odd minutes. That's a very low budget. Well, we had one of the people I interned with was New Zealand Sun Productions. And that's a family team that I heard about. And 
they, Sean, the dad, has been in the business for over 30 years. He was actually Mel Brooks' assistant back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I went on intern with them, and he said, come on out. I'm going to teach you everything there is I know about filmmaking. And you can ask me any question as long as we're not action. I'm going to help you out. He goes, but I want to make this clear. I don't want to know anything about your movie. I'm not interested in your movie. I don't want to be part of your movie. I want to know nothing. And I said, I love that up front. That's great. So I work with them. And then after the shoot, I started, he said, you can call me with any questions. Of course, like I said, I'll call anybody. So I started calling him and I drop hints about my story to him. And then one day he said, you know what? Send me your script and I'm going to help you to make it more budget friendly. So that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop maybe 50 grand from your budget and help you out with that. I said, that's awesome. So I sent him the script. Not four hours later, he calls me and he said, okay, first I have to apologize. I really didn't think that you had a good script. I didn't think I'm just in shock. Please don't take offense, but it's just, an, it's an amazing screenplay. And it's such a great screenplay that we're willing to stop production of our pending movie. And we're, we would like to join your team. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. And he said, just give us the bottom quote you had from parts of your production team. We'll take the lowest quote and we want to make you successful. We want to tell stories like this also. And so I'm like, thank you. And you're on the team without question. That's fantastic. You know, we need to take a, a short break here to listen sure. to an Alzheimer's tip from Dr. Craig Curtis. Should people who want to reduce their risk of Alzheimer's and improve their brain health take something like Centrum Silver, which is advertised as a brain supplement? Well, another great question, Mike. So in a study published last year, they actually showed that people that took a multivitamin such as Centrum Silver actually did slightly better on memory tests. And this was a double-blind, placebo-controlled study mm -hmm. sponsored by the Alzheimer's Association. However, the Alzheimer's Association has come out and said, we still don't have enough information to recommend a daily multivitamin. There was a study that showed no effect of a daily multivitamin a few years back that was also a double-blind, placebo-controlled study. So we do have conflicting evidence on whether or not you should take a daily multivitamin. So the question is, take a multivitamin if you have an unhealthy diet. If you have a healthy diet, get your vitamins from natural foods. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks very much, Dr. Curtis. Thank you for having me, Mike. Good. With over 20 years of experience studying brain health, Dr. Curtis's goal is to educate the village's community on how to live a longer, healthier life. To learn more, visit his website, craigcurtismd.com or call 352-500-5252 to attend a free seminar. Okay, so we're back with Chad Richardson. We were talking about getting his movie produced. So you, you found the Hollywood production company that decided they wanted to partner with you after they right. wrote it. Yeah. Which is a, a really big accomplishment. So Yeah, it was. How did they help you? Oh, I just, how didn't they help me? For one, I directed the movie and I'd never directed before. And I say I directed the very, the first week, uh, Sean, he did the schedule. And so what he did is he did small scenes for the first couple of weeks and then simply said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you look like a great director. Just follow my lead, yet you're not following my lead. And I had a very strong vision of what I wanted to create. And then we would go into the shoots, we'd rehearse and we'd look at it. And then he always made me look like I was the man in charge. But really, he was just as fundamental in directing this movie as anybody else. But it, it, Sean is a very humble man and he, he'll be very quiet about his input. But Sean, his son Taylor, Danny Schaefer, their side of the production team, they were incredible. And then when I finished the movie, I had done editing, I edited shorts and I edited this movie also, and that was in collaboration with Sean also. And, and then I had another, I have a professional editor that edits like Spider-Man movies. He's a real big Hollywood editor. So he collaborated with me. I had some amazing help and that really came from saying, Hey, I need help. I want to make this. I have this vision. I, I have a wonderful story. I want to tell. I want to help people deal with life and death. And, and tell this family story. And, and it really just resonated and people just volunteered. 
and mm-hmm. said, I'll help you. We, I want to see this story. We have high hopes that people will watch this movie. I, the big meeting I had the, the first day where he had the whole cast and crew, I, I gave a big speech and I said, it sounds pompous. It sounds grand, but I would love for people to leave this movie theater and call a loved one they haven't talked to in 20 years and say, hey, I miss you. Can we talk? Life's too short. Can we talk? I mean, get we had a great ending. I'm not going to reveal it. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's a grand thing we're hoping for, but we, if we can get people to connect, then we did our job. Are you planning on taking the film to any of the film festivals? No. The problem with film festivals is the obviously one is getting in, which I think we'd get in a few, is the cost, is the the lack of guarantees now for indie films to to attract a, a distributor. So we, we've already signed with a distributor. We're expecting worldwide dis- distribution with at least five different streamers in the next couple of months. So we're off and running, but we're, we're not shown anywhere yet, or it should be coming up pretty soon though. Is it a pay-per-view movie? We have Amazon has signed up so far, licensed us, Roku, OTT, which is their in itself a aggregate distributor. So they take the movie and they license it across their platforms. And I don't even know all the ones they, they do. But right now it's the impatient game. We, we've been waiting over four months now for the movie to come out and we have no control over that. So a fear we have is it won't come out to election season. So that when it's not a political you, movie. You never know in this kind of an election cycle. Are there going to be any opportunities for folks here in the villages to see the movie before it's has its public release? Yeah, we hope to partner with as you were talking with a friend of yours and possibly show it down at the villages, we'd love to show it at the villages. So you have uh, the rights we, to do that yourself. Absolutely. So we, it was a dream come true for me. So we filmed at the Orange Blossom Opry. I highly recommend that to everybody down there. It's an, it's, we've been going to the Orange Blossom Opry over 20 years. And another great story is I had to shoot there. I had to shoot there. My father's a very strict, very strict man mm-hmm. and didn't, really show much emotion and my dad actually danced at the orange blossom opry more than once which was which is a quite an adventure in itself yeah we have yeah we have some amazing memories and i went to roger and heather byers at the opry and i tried to have a meeting with them for months i went there in person several times i called i emailed and finally roger calls me and he says hey are you chad richardson i yes he goes can you please stop calling me and i said no i can't i can't I go, listen, if you give me five minutes to tell you this story and you say no, then I'll stop. But I really want to film at, at your theater. And so that and it, that led to a meeting in person, another meeting, and they fell in love with it. They fell in love with the story and they opened their arms to us. Bobby Randall it was incredible. For those of you, Bobby Randall, he actually sat down with one of our professional singers and wrote a song for this movie, this, the big song in that movie. Bobby Randall and Carly Naff wrote, and it's just such a beautiful song. It, and it, it still brings tears to my eyes that they, that this happened. I'm listening to Bobby Randall and them create this song in a recording studio. And I just couldn't believe that this was happening. And, and so we were allowed in the theater. We filmed, obviously we filmed at the Orange Blossom Opry and amazing, some scenes there. And, and I'll treasure those memories. And then Roger and Heather invited us back to do a screening there. So we did a screening with a Q and A with me and Bob Gallagher, who is Senator Richard Van Sutton. Really? Yeah, and that was, that was. Did they um, have a screen in that place? I don't remember. Yeah, they actually, he actually b- bought a screen system for the movie. They really love the movie so much. They said it's the first time they've shown a movie at the Opry. And so we are so honored. And oh. one of my fondest memories I will treasure forever is that I sat at the, on the side of the stage and I watched the audience, the entire movie, and to see people laughing, to see grown men crying and people holding each other, it was just incredible. And after the show, we did the Q&A. And when that was done, I had about probably an 85-year-old gentleman walk up to me and he goes, I got a problem with you. And I, okay, sir, you didn't like the movie? He goes, no, you made me cry. I don't cry. And I thought that was just, it was just such a great moment. So well, I mean, that's draw, what we're shooting for. You, you did your job as a movie maker. You took people right. on the plane. That's what we're trying to, 
that's the greatest compliment to a filmmaker that I was able to make you feel and that you felt motion that, that made you feel good too, that made you feel good. So yeah, for that gentleman, our mission was accomplished and I, I hope for a lot of other people too. So now do you have a, another project that you're working on after the bad Senator? I I'm working on a, and I, I just love this story so much, a, a faith-based movie about a priest, a cop and a soldier. And how these three tormented souls come together and basically save each other through God's word. So it's a very faith-based one. We're trying, we're looking, trying to attract funding right now for it. I would love to do the movie. It's another one that if you don't cry, I'd be shocked. Just it's a, it's another movie that we, and again, no disrespect to any filmmaker, but, but we're right now, we're trying to focus on movies that don't have violence or try to shy away from violence unless it's a necessary moment, but because it is an ugly world, but well, we're just trying to, we're trying to do movies with a message mm -hmm. that will bring people together. And I'm talking about people from all walks of life. I was raised, you treat people the way you like to be treated. There was no racism or discrimination. There was none of that growing up. We didn't, we grew up in Detroit and you'd be surprised. There was nothing on the radar. My parents didn't raise us that way. And we try to raise our children that way. And I think there needs to be more of that, less hate, more acceptance. So good. And if someone wants to get a hold of you, is there an email address that, that, that they can use to? Send? Yeah, absolutely. Dir directly to me is Chad W. Richardson at yahoo.com. You can always check out our website, which is shadowdreamworksllc.com. And that'll tell you what we're working on right now and give you a, you can get the movie trailer for bad senators on there and other information too. That, that trailer is phenomenal, just phenomenal. Oh, thank you. So, that, I had to work with another editor on that, and that's the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. I don't ever want to do a trailer again. It's hard. It's hard to encapsulate a movie into two minutes. Yeah, but it, it came out phenomenal. Thank you very I much. I've seen the, the preview up at the Spruce Creek, and I wasn't expecting anything phenomenal yeah. out of the trailer, but I was surprised and pleased, but by the trailer. And then when I saw the okay. finished product, the two hour movie, I said, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Really like that. Any other fa final words for our listeners, Chad? I hope they go see it. I hope they push to get the movie in the villages and, uh, and we love to shoot there again. And we love to shoot at the villages. I do have an outline. I, I am working on bad Senator too. I have the story. I would love to come down there. Back to the yeah, and has, at the end of the day, we have to make money. This is at the end of the day, no matter what we do, we still have to make money. So if we can make enough money, it would justify coming back down there. And we would love to film there. I'm ready to go. Ready to go right now. So let's hope that uh, Mr. Morris listens to this podcast. I hope so. I'm, I'll meet him anytime. Any name it, I'll be down there. Great. Thanks a lot, Chad. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. Remember, our next episode will be released next Friday at 9 a.m. Should you want to become a major supporter of the show or have questions, please contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. This is a shout out for supporters, Tweet Coleman, Ed Williams, and major supporter Dr. Craig Curtis at K2 in the Villages. We will be hearing more from Dr. Curtis with short Alzheimer's tips each week. If you know someone who should be on the show, contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. We thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyrighted by Roth Voice 2024, all rights reserved.